Will Shipley joins us. First of all, how are we doing? We good? Yes, sir. Doing we healthy great. for the most part? Yes, sir. Yep, yep, yep. Doing good. Um, yeah, I really appreciate y'all having me on. Well, it's our pleasure. Yeah. Uh, and, man, well, you, you know, it's amazing how quick it goes by, though, isn't it? Oh, it's unbelievable. You know, I've, I've been talking to uh, teammates and, and coaches, and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like a veteran now. Um, and it's just unbelievable. You know, we got new guys coming in. Got to kind of take them under my wing just as, you know, the older guys did to – to you know, my class and me. So yeah, it's, it's it's unbelievable how fast it's been going. Different for you a little bit, even though you are a veteran, a new offensive coordinator in Garrett Riley. I just want to know what your first impressions were when you first got to sit down, meet him, shake his hand. Oh man, um, you know I, I could say so many things, but he's just uh, I'd say fiery. You know that's that's the first kind of thing I got from him is um, you know he's got a competitive edge. There's no doubt, and you know from the first conversation I could tell that and. You know, now it's come to fruition here in, uh, in, in spring ball, but you know, he's done such a great job just coming in, gaining the respect of everybody, um, you know, as, as if he even had to. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's done a great job. It's going to be a really fun year with him. You know, uh, we know about the way you can run the football, but you know what? I think your hands are underrated, man. And I know you got a smile on your face, and I'm thinking, mm -hmm. I'm here at Raleigh. Well, I'm going to put old number one somewhere in the flat and just go, oh, yeah, we're going to dump it over here and just you guys go chase him if you can. Mm -hmm. I got to figure that's in the arsenal at some point in time. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, we've gotten a little taste of it here in the spring. Um, you know, everybody's learning a new offense. So, uh, you know, we're not kind of diving into the, the depths that we'll get in you know, during the season when we can game plan and get into the thing. But, um, yeah, you know, I've, I've definitely seen an increase in catches already in, in spring ball. Um, and I think it's going to, you know, continue to increase during the season. But I'm, I'm really excited to just show everybody that, you know, I, I do have some hands and uh, I'm, I'm ready to utilize them. You spent more time on the jugs? Yes, yeah. You know, Coach Spiller's been on Phil and I about that. Um, you know, he, he says every day, we, we don't get it every day, but, uh, you know, after practice we always hold each other accountable. So. Since you mentioned Coach Spiller, who, of course, is C.J. Spiller, I was walking around the football complex earlier. There's very few numbers retired, but, but he's one of them. To have C.J. Spiller as, as your coach, at your position, as great as he was, what has he meant to you and your growth and your career here at Clemson? Oh, uh, it, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. I'm on, almost speechless uh, just because of how much he's helped me. You know, I, I came into the best case scenario that I could have possibly imagined, you know, with Coach Elliott switching to tight ends um, and then Coach Spiller coming in as the, the running back coach my freshman year. Um, so, you know, I've, I've been with him from the start. Uh, he's been with me from the start, uh, and it's just been a really cool experience. We've really grown our relationship. Uh, but the one thing I love about him is he's always going to hold me accountable. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how much success I've had because he's had more. And, you know, I understand that. So that's where all my respect, um, you know, for him comes from. Uh, and then, you know, just how he treats me off the field as well. You know, he just truly cares about you know, us as people um, and, you know, especially as running backs. So. You know, well, we could talk ball with you all day, but the thing that impresses me the most is what you do away from football. You've done, number one, great work in the classroom, so congratulations on that front. Thank you. Uh, and you're also are one of these guys, and this is kind of a Davo thing, quite frankly, with this program, and that is giving back to the community. And we're going to have a great event tonight with Davo's All In uh, charity event. But, uh, you know, the Levine Children's Hospital, I know it's been close to your heart, and you said, hey, you know what, I I'm going to put – the platform that I have to kind of give back. Talk about that a little bit because it's really impressive. Yeah, no, no doubt. Um, you know, it's something that I've wanted to do since uh, you know I was I was very little. Um, and now that you know God has gifted me the platform that I have, and I've been able to you know profit off of my name, image, and likeness, um, I can give back to these things that I you know care about. And you know that's number one. Levine's Children Hospital is unbelievable in what they do. Um, you know, very high in children's health care all across the United States. Um, and, you know, I, I just I love them for who they are and how many people that they help. Um, you know, very, you know, associated with Dr. Herman um, and, you know, just a, a lot of people in there I have relationships with and connections with. So that's kind of where it comes from for me. And, um, you know, now that, like I said, I've been blessed, I can give back financially, which I, I know helps in, in different ways. Is there one kid that you've really connected with over the years? Do you have a story like that? I'm sure you have many, but is there one that holds a really special place in your heart? Yeah, um, you know, I, I've, I've gone, every time I go back to Charlotte, I always make sure to go by. Um, but I, I would say one in particular, and I'm not sure if I can name um, any yeah. names, but yeah, I, I still keep in touch with her and her mom. Um, you know, such a sweet little girl uh, who just, you know, got, got hit with adversity. And, um, 
you know, she's battled through it. She's, uh, she's doing really, really well. But yeah, I, I keep in touch with her and her mom all the time. Uh, always just brings a smile to my face. Well, you're getting it done with studies, right? With the, with the 4 and all that great stuff. We, we talked about the all ACC, the only player in history, all ACC in three different positions. The give back with the you know, Levine Children's Hospital. What was the NFL internship like though? I mean, I, I, I can't believe you still find enough time to be able to do all this stuff, but what was that like? Oh, it was incredible. Uh, you know, I got to go there with three of my best friends. Um, we were right in the you know siddle, center of New York City. Um, and not only did we get to learn about business and you know the operations around the NFL, um, but kind of also got to experience you know something that we haven't before. You know, I've never been to New York. That was my first time. I think it was the same for you know two of my other roommates that that came with me. So uh, the food absolutely unbelievable. Uh, the bagels are 100% better, no doubt. But I kind of um, got yeah. with the bagels and pizza. Yeah. Or... Yes. Yeah. So so we got to experience all of that. It's a uh, just something that shows why Clemson University is so great, you know, just funding that and giving us the opportunity. Well, I know that you put the, uh, the question out on Twitter, like, all right, I'm in New York City, what should I do? And I, in fact, I was watching vicariously just to see all your, I, I think I responded your... to a couple of those. Yes, sir, yeah. And, and I just laughed, I was like, you know, for anybody that's never been to New York, I mean, you walk off the plane, you're like, oh my God, it's New York City, right. there's a what trillion am I things. Do? Wait, where am I, what am I gonna do, what town mm -hmm. am I in, right? One of those routines. So I figured you had a huge time in the Big Apple. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we all loved it. We, we loved it. Bill Maffa, one of your roommates. So you get to do a lot of these cool things with him. And, and when, when talking to the coaches and, and Dabo and, and Garrett Riley, the, his name keeps coming up. Um, first of all, what's your relationship like between the two of you? And, and what can we expect out of this one-two punch? Because it feels like, you know, we know what you have to offer, but there could be another level to Phil Maffa, too. Yeah, you know, that's that's been my best friend since the first day, you know, I stepped on campus in, you know, January, my my mid-year. Um, and you know, I, I just love that kid to death, man. He, he deserves the world and everything that he's done. Uh, super pumped to, to have him back on the squad and, uh, you know, just, just ready to go. And, and, you know, like you said, there's a different level that, you know, everybody has not seen of Phil Moffa, and that's, that's going to be unleashed this year. Um, you know, I, I would I would say more of a one-one punch. You know, we're like we're that. we're uh, always competing, always holding each other accountable. But yeah, I, I I love that dude. He talked about that he's changed a lot of things that he's done food-wise and sleep-wise since you're his roommate. What do you see that's different in that department? Yeah, you know, I've lived with him since we since we got here, um, so I've kind of seen you know that that evolve for him. But yeah, you know, he's really cleaned up his eating habits. Um, we're still killing Chipotle <laughs> way too much um, you know but you know not only that like you said his sleep habits the way he trains um, just what what he puts in his body you know he's, he's been so aware about that um, so yeah you're definitely gonna see a, a, a level up from from uh, should I keep wanting to say 26 but he's seven now so yeah just be on the lookout <laughs> uh, as far as practice goes when we get done with you we got a couple linebackers coming up here Jeremiah Trotter jr. and Barrett Carter, who are, are two bad dudes now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what's practice like? I, I got to figure, were you in the backfield? You got eyes. You're looking around. You see those two guys on the other side going ones on ones. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to get to the corner, but guess what? They got some great speed. Yeah, no, no doubt. Um, you know, they're they're the best two linebackers in the country, um, and to be able to practice against them every single day uh, has been a blessing for for Phil and I. Uh, and, and just to be able to compete against them. Oh, and it's, it's competitive now. I mean, you know, especially Barrett. Uh, you know, he's, he's a little more speech-driven than, than Jeremiah vocal. is. Yeah, but vocal, that, that's the word, thank you. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just so fun to practice against them every day and uh, just, just better myself, because I, I know I'm going against the best, so. But for you personally, you've talked a lot about the one thing you've worked on really is patience. Uh, how do you work on Patience. What are the things you can do to better your patience when you get out on the field? Yeah, you know, it's been it's been really frustrating for me because uh, I, I lose a lot of opportunities just based off of how fast I'm going. And you know, I can work on it as much as I want, but when I get out to the field and adrenaline's pumping, you know, yeah. instincts come back. So that's truly what I've been trying to do is just uh, train it to be an instinct for me, and just take everything slow because I know when the time comes, uh, you know, I can take off. But you got to kind of just learn control and. And that, and you know, that's another thing Coach Biller's done a great job of is, is helping me with that because you know it's something that he struggled with as well when he first got here. And you know, Coach Sweeney has, has uh, made that comparison. 
Um, so yeah, just learning from him and really just trying to make it an instinct to uh, just slow down sometimes. Any tactics specifically that you can point out that he's given you? I don't know, is there meditation? I, I don't know, how do you do this? <laughs> yeah, um, it really just starts with your track as a running back. So, um, you know, that first two steps in, in my movement, take them a little slower. You know, be able to see the defensive line progress and, you know, the second level defenders uh, kind of where they're moving. So, yeah, just all, all with the start of things, uh, all with the details. But, yeah, just, just got to take it slow on the track. We're going to have another hurdle play like we did against Louisville last year, huh? We're going to get a couple more of those in the back pocket for oh, 23? Yeah. It's no, a subtle nod. He no doubt. No, no, it's, it's happening. I, I promise y'all. Uh, there's going to be some, some fun plays in, in the Valley, no doubt. How, and by the way, when you pulled that stunt, I mean, how long did, how many weeks went by where you heard from somebody? It could be a student going to class, professor, buddies back home in the Queen City, mm -hmm. teammates, because that play, I mean, we kept seeing it over and over. It was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, probably my, my, my favorite play here at Clemson, you know, up to this point. But, uh, it, and honestly, it hasn't, like, truly stopped. You know, it, it still gets brought up in a lot of the conversations. Um, but, yeah, I would say kind of after the season ended is when uh, a, a lot of stuff dies down, attention dies down. So, yes, sir. So I'm, I'm looking over here, and, and one of your linebacker friends, Mr. Trotter's over there at this point. <laughs> um, th there's a big debate. Who's faster, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. or Barrett Carter? Ooh, Do you want to get spot. in on this debate? On the spot. On the uh. spot. No, I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I well, especially because Jeremiah is right there. So if I say the wrong thing, then uh, I know I'll be f facing it in uh, fall camp. So. Fair. That's fair. Well, I'll tell you what, if you pick Carter, I got $10 that says Trotter's going to lay you out here in about six Ooh, seconds. We right? Put this live on the ACC PM. <laughs> we'll but we need everybody to stay healthy. Okay, you're going to be, you're, there's going to be some other people kind of filling the role tomorrow for, for spring ball. So, so what's your role tomorrow on the sideline as you're watching everything pan out in the Valley? Yeah, um, you know, just be a coach to the, those guys out there uh, just be a different set of eyes I know coach Spillers on the white team I'm a uh, I'm orange team so uh, yeah just kind of controlling the running backs on that side and making sure that everything's run run smoothly from a you know operation standpoint a little smack talk to coach Spiller no doubt no doubt yeah there was a lot of that going on yesterday in our segment so <laughs> well, listen again congratulations on all your success on the field off the field you are a perfect example of what it's all about as far as a college student athlete and taking advantage of all the platforms and giving back. I mean, it's first class. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate y'all having me on. It's always a pleasure. I'm looking forward to watching you play this year for you sure. You got it. There's Will Shipley.